Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants and certain other autotrophic organisms manufacture their own food material in the form of carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight through a complex series of reactions within the organism. In other words, it is a process of converting light energy to chemical energy. Photosynthesis takes place inside cellular organelles called chloroplasts, which contain abundant photosynthetic pigments called chlorophyll. Chloroplasts are found in abundance in green leaves and are therefore the major site of photosynthesis in plants. Gaseous oxygen is a major byproduct of the process of photosynthesis. The chemical reactions that take place in this process may be summarized as follows. Photosynthesis occurs in two major steps, both of which take place within the chloroplasts, a light reaction and a dark reaction. Starch is eventually formed as a reserve food by plants at the end of a photosynthetic process. If a plant is stripped of any one or all of the vital factors necessary for it to carry on photosynthesis, then photosynthesis immediately ceases to occur in that plant. As a result, the plant starts utilizing its existing reserve food that has been stored in the form of starch. Eventually, the plant would have used up all its remaining stored starch and become what is known as a de-starch plant. A de-starch plant cannot remain alive for long unless it is resupplied with the vital factors necessary for photosynthesis to occur. The absence or presence of starch and thereby photosynthesis is determined using iodine solution, which turns blue-black in color in the presence of starch, but retains its original brown color in the absence of starch. In this experiment, we're going to investigate the role of gaseous carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis and find out if carbon dioxide is indeed necessary for photosynthesis to occur in a plant. For this experiment, we're going to need the following. Two potted plants, preferably of the same species and size. Water bath. Two large identical test tubes. Two petri dishes. Ethanol or isopropanol or methylated spirit aqueous iodine solution, forceps, a pair of scissors and sticky tape, two small identical beakers containing equal volumes of potassium or sodium hydroxide solution and distilled water respectively, two large plastic bags or two identical bell jars. Begin the experiment by placing both the potted plants in the dark for about two to three days. This step is essential in order to rid the plant of any starch that was formed in the leaves prior to the start of the experiment. At the end of this time period, remove the potted plants from the dark. Place the beaker containing distilled water inside one of the pots and place the second beaker containing potassium hydroxide in the other pot. Cover both the pots using the transparent plastic bags and seal the openings of the bags using sticky tapes in order to create an airtight environment within the pots like so. The pot containing distilled water will be our control for this experiment. Leave the potted plants in sunlight for several hours. Now, remove the plastic bags from the pots. Pluck a leaf of similar sizes from each of the two plants and introduce them into the two large test tubes containing the alcohol solution. Give appropriate markings to the tubes. Place the tubes in the boiling water bath. If you are using an open flame such as spirit lamp or Bunsen burner for your water bath, then make sure to turn off the burner flame once the tube has been placed in the bath. This is to make sure that the alcohol fumes do not catch fire during the boiling process which is a huge possibility considering the highly flammable nature of alcohols. Alternatively, you may use a hot plate for boiling, like the one I'm using here, instead of an open flame. During this boiling step, chlorophyll pigments in the leaves are decolorized by the hot alcohol solution, resulting in a bleached leaf with pale white color. This step is necessary for a better visualization of the iodine starch reaction on the leaf surface in the later parts of this experiment. Once bleaching of the leaves has been accomplished, remove the leaves from the alcohol using a forcep. Briefly place the leaves for a few seconds in the hot water bath in order to soften the leaves.
transfer the leaves into the two petri dishes containing iodine solution. After a couple of minutes, you'll notice that the leaf from the control plant has turned blue-black in color in the iodine solution, indicating that the control plant was carrying out photosynthesis and forming starch in the leaves. The leaf from the test plant, however, do not show any significant change in color, except for a faint brown iodine color. This is a negative test for starch and thereby photosynthesis, indicating that the test plant was unable to carry out photosynthesis because whatever carbon dioxide which was present within the sealed pot was absorbed by the potassium hydroxide in the beaker. This simple experiment clearly demonstrates that carbon dioxide is an essential external component for photosynthesis to take place in a plant.